The Intercept has obtained more than 900 pages of documents detailing the work of a U.S.-based health organization that used federal money to fund bat coronavirus research at a Chinese laboratory. One grant highlighted in the document details an effort to screen thousands of bat samples for novel coronavirus, as well as people who work with the live animals. It was awarded for a five-year period and renewed in 2019, but the Trump administration suspended the grant in April of 2020. There's a lot more in these documents that were obtained through a, a Freedom of Information Act request that the, uh, that the Intercept filed with the, the, with the NIH, and, and we'll be going through them over, over the course of the next few days, I'm sure. But what, ju what jumps out here is you know, the, the, type, the type of research that certainly uh, has risks of, of jumping into the general population. Kim, I mean, wh what, what do you make of these new revelations? Yeah, so what we're finding is that EcoHealth Alliance was given $3.1 million, right, to study these sorts of things. And uh, nearly 600 of that went to the Wuhan Institute. And they knew how dangerous a lot of this research was. There was even talks in these documents about um, bats biting people. And so they were saying, well, this is really risky because they bite and they're looking for viruses in these bats. They know that it's risky. They're, they're looking for viruses that can transmit to humans. Um, and, you know, this just goes to show that this type of research is risky. They were doing this type of research. We know the funds were going to this. And so it does call into question the origins of the virus. You know, that's plagued us all. Did this start in a lab? Was this some random bat in a cave that they were looking at? Um, you know, there's a lot of questions here. The, I think the ridicule uh, um, directed at people who discussed, uh, who even wondered about the lab leak theory, the ridicule coming from many people in the mainstream media, many mainstream news organizations, some political figures, um, not to say it's aged poorly is putting it mildly, right? This is going to go down in history as one of like the biggest screw ups in terms of, I mean, that, well, obviously the, the actual incident is a screw up, but, but the amount of refusing to talk about ever treating you like you're crazy, like you're propagating, you're spreading a conspiracy theory. If you had questions and the denials at every stage is from people like Dr. Fauci and others, it, the, all, the more information we find, we, the things we find out, we find out that, that, yes, we were paying for something very close to this research, and it was and it research that, was, that we have a lot of reason to question was done appropriately in an area of the world, in a specific lab um, uh, where, where, where this has arisen, and, and it's, 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 we obviously need to learn more, but it's, it, it's hilarious right. how, how silenced you were right. from expressing concern. Yeah. Right, and we don't yet I have don't, yeah. no. Yeah, we don't right yet have definitive proof of where it of or, not, originated, right. but we have plenty of evidence that that keeps the question open in a way that it wasn't allowed to be kept open a, a year ago. In a way I, that you know, even even if it's if it turns out that that COVID nineteen did not emerge from this lab scenario, I, I would still be very. I, I wouldn't want this kind right. of thing funded right. yes. for this unsafe lab. It it, it could have emerged, right. and and other there have been. Uh, we know that diseases have escaped labs before. We know that th right. this is uh, this has happened, and we need to be very careful about about what we're funding and if we have any control over it. The benefit here does not seem to outweigh the risk at all. What what is the benefit? What were they trying to? They're trying to figure out how bad this could be. Well, it's really bad. We've all, yeah. we're living through it. <laughs> yes, box checked. We figured that one out. Yeah. Conclusion, I mean, it's bad. May maybe there is some benefit to studying these so that we can, you know, quickly sort of eradicate a virus that might come through the next time around. I mean, you know, I'm not going to disregard the, the, the validity of potentially doing a science like this. I don't fully understand it myself, but certainly... Um, all theories should be investigated. And I was one of those people that, you know, on my own YouTube channel, making videos on this and being demonetized, removed, actually fully removed, the channel being struck. I was labeled a conspiracy theorist, not allowed to grow, uh, went from, you know, 15, 20,000 subscribers a month to zero for an entire year. They wouldn't let me grow a single subscriber. And it was because of uh, talking about the lab leak theory. And that is, and so for me, it wasn't la a laughing matter at all. It was my livelihood. And they completely, you know, ripped away my source of income because of this type of reporting. And so, you know, this is one of those things. It's, it's just it does fly in the face of 
um, the the media establishment that is out there also just the one narrative nation that we seem to be marching ourselves towards where you're only allowed to say something if the government sanctions it as an okay talking point, which is absolutely ridiculous. And people advocating for that saying, well, you can't spread misinformation. You have to wait for the government to say yes, that that's exactly what's going on. Wait for the officials to right. verify. The officials and, and like, their allies, the, the, right? The, the, the officials right, and their allies right. among the chattering class. It wasn't, th this right. wasn't a case where the government was saying, no, this is a conspiracy theory. Don't look at this. And then of, you know, our very objective truth-finding news media all condemned them. That talking point was recirculated by a lot of these people. Not, yeah. you know, not everyone. Obviously, there were reporter at the Washington Post who did a really tremendous job digging into this. Other sources as well. You know, I don't mean to paint with a broad brush and say everyone in the media is, you know, the same entity or can be discerned down to one perspective. But there was just a lot of really sloppy uh, kind of attempt to do gotcha reporting about people who are talking about this early on that that is that is that is shameful well and the job of a news reporter is to criticize and scrutinize everything we should not be sitting here just listening to what the officials say and saying that's it that's the story so that's what we're running with i mean we should be questioning everything including the lab leak theory and personally for me i still even question whether it came from china or the wuhan lab i say everything should be investigated including labs in the united states you've got people here pointing the finger at us fine look at everything even look for the bat the, the infamous bat, you know, the soup that somebody apparently made in the Wuhan wet market. We should be looking at everything and not. And like you said, you know, Ryan, there's no evidence that this came from this lab yet, but there's also no evidence it didn't. Right. So. Yep. And, as, and a second grant detailed in the documents was awarded in August of 2020 and focused on, quote, scaling up and deploying resources in Asia in case of an outbreak of an emergent infectious disease. The materials confirmed the grant supported the construction in Wuhan of novel chimeric SARS-related coronaviruses that combined a spike gene from one coronavirus with genetic information from another coronavirus and confirmed the resulting viruses could infect human cells. According to the report, the documents make it clear that assertions by NIH Director Francis Collins and Dr. Anthony Fauci that the NIH did not support gain-of-function research or potential pandemic pathogen enhancement at WIV are untruthful. And so if you are taking a coronavirus and you're tweaking it so that it can not just infect a bat but can infect a human, that's, that is generally understood to be gain-of-function uh, research. I know that there are people at the NIH who will look at it and say, well, under our criteria, for some reason, this doesn't qualify, and so we're not breaking the rules. But the public has a say in this, too. Yeah. And when the public looks at that and says, well, no, when we said we don't want gain-of-function research, that's, that's what we meant. We, didn't, we meant don't mm -hmm. make super viruses more super contagious yeah. so that they could spark a Right. Uh, pandemic. <laughs> well, this is, you right. know, this has been, an, and these are two very different issues, but I see almost overlapping themes in, in Afghanistan, you know, the generals, the military experts, you know, the people who really study this stuff, wanting to stay in forever. The American people want out. The, the political figure, Joe Biden, actually sides with the people, mm -hmm. does what he said he was going to do, gets us out. And also with this kind of, you know, the health science bureaucracy, the, you know, the, the, this massive bureaucratic organization, funding all this stuff, not quite sure what they're doing, not having close oversight, but they're the experts, they're the scientists, we're not supposed to question them, you know, they're, they're, they're let them handle it. That, I think that, that kind of tendency, the kind of, um, uh, uh, you know, sort of centrist, just with good people in government and should establish a bureaucracy and we'll leave them to do what, you know, what they're doing and it doesn't need to be really responsible to the people because what do the, what do the people know? That has just, I, I, so many of these crises we're dealing with right now, I, I think have shown why that is fundamentally an unsound way of viewing policy. No, we, the, the political leader gets to be in charge because we vested the political authority and the scientists, generals, experts, well-educated people, they're right about a lot of stuff, they're smart people, but some of these are moral judgments. Yeah. Even if you're the one who knows technically how to execute a creating a better, a better uh, virus or executing a, a war, the people and the political leaders get to make the moral call for whether that is how we are going to, whether that's something we're even going to do, whether that's a, a justifiable use of our resources. And, uh, and, and, and that needs to be the conversation. So. Yeah, no, I think, I think that's exactly right. <laughs> I'm, totally, I'm totally fine leaving it to scientists uh, to determine what kind of research that they want to do. As long as it's not the kind of research that if they make one little mistake could cause a pandemic, 
at that point, the public gets a gets a voice in these discussions. It's not like this is an un, this is a very popular idea in 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 uh, literature. In in this is a well explored concept <laughs> in public uh, entertainment that that the, these horrible horrible disease and it's look it's happened before. We now know that some of the past um, uh, disease outbreak there were outbreaks of uh, of of uh, passages that escaped Soviet labs, etc. Mm -hmm. So it's not unthinkable that this would be what happened here. And, 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 and it could yeah. happen. We could even if it wasn't this case, we could do it in the future if we're not much more careful about what we're doing. Right. And yeah, I think we yeah. always have to have some oversight over these scientists because scientists are sometimes mad scientists, you know, and <laughs> right. they sometimes forget that there is an, a, an ethics to this sort of thing. And that, you know, you, you if you would allow a scientist to do what they want, a lot of them would do very unethical um, experiments and, you know, they would try all kinds of different things just for the sake of that experiment and for the sake of science. And I do think we have to limit them a bit and say, hey, you know, like, you know, I remember back in the day they were talking about cloning, right? Like human cloning. Should we be even looking into this as, as a type of science? Should we be investigating this? There's a lot of ethics around a lot of the types of science that these guys want to do. And so I think we do have to have some oversight. Especially when it has the potential to kill millions of people, and, and in yeah. this case, actually has. More rising right after this. Stick with us.